It's the Blind Movie Review. Eight twenty six. Derek is here for the Blind Movie Review. Derek is blind, and he went to well, you can see it. He went to Spider Man three. And you know, some movies I can actually sort of say, you know, I did see some parts of it, but this one I really didn't catch very much visually. Because, you know, I do have like 10% sight or whatever. But, mm-hmm. well, it just, well, I'll, I'll explain. Um, this is, of course, Spider Man 3. It's the third installment franchise starring Jerry Maguire and Kirstie Alley. Um, Kirstie Alley's in it? Oh, sorry. Kirstie Alley. Um, the fat girl? Oh, Kirsten Dunst. Yeah, I was going to say, because it was Kirstie Alley, you'd see her for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't sound like an ex-fat cokehead. Um, now, guys, I don't need to explain this to you, but I'm not a juggler. Never been a juggler. Yeah. Can barely handle one ball, let alone three. But uh, I'm pretty good with two. Are you? All right. Lots of things going on in this film. For example, I'll give you a little plot outline. We start off, Peter Parker, he's finally struck a balance between his life as Spider-Man and his life as Peter Parker. He's, he's doing well in school. He's got married Jane Watson, his, his girlfriend. He's actually quite popular in town. He's a media darling in, in, in New York City. And, uh, you know, life is going well for him to the, fact, to the point where he's starting to get cocky. Meanwhile, Mary Jane, Kirsten Dunst, her, her Broadway career is kind of going down the tubes, not doing very well. She's getting kind of jealous that Peter is, uh, you know, getting all of this fame and fortune as Spider-Man, and um, things aren't going so well for her. Meanwhile, Harry Osborn is still trying to kill Peter Parker because he's trying to avenge his father's death. Yeah, this is the Goo Goblin's son. Yes, the Goo Goblin's son, and he actually takes on the persona of the Goo Goblin as <laughs> is well. Is he called the Goo Goblin? Yes. Yeah, in my, goo my, Hobgoblin. Goo, yeah, in my, goo, my estimation, yeah. Yeah. I see. So, and in one uh, early battle in the film between him and Spider-Man, he gets Ooh. in uh, between Harry, the Goo Goblin, the goo goblin I'll and, go with it. and Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he gets knocked on the head and gets some amnesia. So he forgets that he and uh, Peter Parker slash Spider-Man are enemies. So that's put on hold for a while. Meanwhile... Seems complicated, Derek. Yeah, well, this is what I'm getting to. Meanwhile, you have uh, Topher Grace's character. He's, uh, he's sort of Peter Parker's rival photographer at the Daily Bugle. And it gets to the point where he wants Peter dead, too. Meanwhile, Peter Parker and, uh, and Mary Jane are in a park, and this meteor comes flying down, and this black substance gets onto Peter and turns him into kind of bad Spider-Man. How much can happen to this guy? Well, this is this is the thing. Meanwhile, what else? Meanwhile, uh, oh, meanwhile, Uncle Ben's true killer is uh, determined. The rice guy? The rice guy. <laughs> <laughs> he died in turns five out, minutes. Turns out it was someone from Basmati Rice. <laughs> <laughs> so the police are chasing after the real killer. And, you know, as luck would have it, they chase him into a particle research facility. And he falls into a pit and, and unwittingly becomes a, a uh, experiment. And uh, he's departicalized and turns into the Sandman, who's hell-bent on killing Peter Parker and Spider-Man. How many villains do we have? We go. We've got... That's, that's about it for villains. So, so you have all these stories, and they're all... It's flipping back and forth between one story to the next. That makes it tough on you, eh? Oh, it was really tough. To the point where... <laughs> Like, the action scenes, I like action scenes, even if I can't see what's going on, because the music and the excitement uh, gets my heart pumping. But in this film, more so than the other two, there are a lot of really quiet moments where there seems to be a lot of staring going on. (laughs) Sucks to be blind. Oh, boy. So, (laughs) as, you know, I was waiting to get to the dialogue pieces, because dialogue pieces are actually pretty good and quite, quite funny, actually, but they're so few and far between and spread out with these staring scenes. So I had lots of time to think uh, while I'm sitting there. And I thought, I, st- I started thinking back to anthropology classes back when I was younger. And I thought to myself, you know, when, Sp- when uh, Peter Parker was bitten by that spider way back in the first movie, mm. he got all kind of the good qualities of the spider. And I'm thinking, you know, what if he had gotten like, some of the other spiders? And I, and I remembered the, the whole uh, concept of what happens when spiders breed. Now, the male spider... Actually, spiders really are the goalie pullers of the nature world. Because the, the, the way that they're made up, they can't actually have sort of intercourse with a yeah, spider. Yeah, they leave it somewhere. But what they do is they have these two fleshy pulps on either side of their mouth. And they make a little, they spin a little rag and they ejaculate into it. 
and then they fill their pulps up with their sperm, and then they go downtown uh, on the female uh, yeah. to impregnate Are you serious? them. I'm yeah. serious. That's how they and do then, it. And you did all the actions. That was nice. Yeah, yeah, this Thanks. is good. Eh? Thanks for that. So, so I started thinking that would have made a much more interesting movie for me. <laughs> Because then at the end of the act, the female bites the male's head off and kills it. I thought that would have been very interesting. And then the other part of the spider. So you would have preferred. I would have preferred. That Peter Parker whacked it into a sponge and then put it in his mouth and then went, went over to Kirsten, down, Dunst, Kirsten Dunst. Who Kirsten then Dunst. would proceed to bite Is that his head correct? Off. Oh, it might have made for a more interesting for me. All right. And I'm, just, I'm being a little selfish. And you so, thought there was a lot going on in the actual movie. Yeah. And maybe subliminally you wanted Kirstie Alley to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Bigger target. Yeah. <laughs> so once I was through thinking about that, I, also, I thought, uh, you know, the other thing about spiders that's real is that despite having eight eyes, they can't see very well. And I thought, wouldn't that be great? If, if Spider-Man was blind, that would be such a more interesting film. And I thought of a, and I made up a song while the movie was oh, on, nice. if I may. Yeah. Blind Spider-Man, blind Spider-Man, fighting crime, white cane in hand, swings around the city gingerly. He's a crime fighter from the CNIB. Look out, look out! There goes Blind Spider-Man! I'm going to give this movie three blurries out of five, and that's the way I see it. <laughs> it's the Blind Movie Review. 8.33, you are one messed up dude. You are very messed up. You look like Stevie Wonder there, kind of. Thanks, man. Was I doing the shake? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find the microphone.